Happy New Year friends and welcome back to my channel. For this video, I'm going to be showing you my initial setup for my 2021 planner. This is the Starbucks planner. I bought this off of eBay from a seller in Taiwan. I've already made a video on how you can get this planner if you're living in the States and what it looks like inside when it's completely brand new. So I will link that video down below. I've had this planner since September and ever since then, I've been pretty much itching to move into this planner. So I'm really excited to be using this planner now. This planner is in the moleskin large size or the kaye size as some shops would call it. It is my third consecutive year in this size. So just for fun, here are all of my past planners. This is from 2019 and then these two are from 2020. I had a bullet journal for One Book July and then for the rest of the year, I was in this planner. And look at her, she is so chunky. I am planning on doing a flip through of this planner. So if you're interested in that video, definitely stick around. I just need some time to cover up some private information and all that. So please bear with me. I am a little swamped this month, but that video is definitely coming. Back to my 2021 planner. I have this house currently in a Chic Sparrow Traveler's Notebook. This is their wide size and this is the Waypoint Leather in Vintage Black. I got this pre-loved from Facebook. And it is a traveler's notebook, so there are strings on the inside. But the Starbucks planner can fit into this as a folio. Now I know this isn't meant to be a folio for notebooks, but it fits very comfortably into the pocket here. And then you can just slip it into the secretarial pocket. And there you go. Now the waypoint letter is very soft and floppy, so it can stretch out a little bit. Here in the front, I have this charm from Iron Bark Journals. I've had this for a long time and it is one of my favorite charms. And then opening up my traveler's notebook, this is a deluxe traveler's notebook, by the way. So you have the three pockets here on the left side. And on the top, I have a card for my personal info in case my planner gets lost. This card has my name, my phone number, my email, and my social media links. And then in the middle, I have a card for emergency numbers. And then here at the bottom, I just have this little card from Poi and Han. I love this quote. It really resonated with me. Here is the back, by the way. It looks beautiful. So I just like to keep this with me because I really like that quote and I just like to keep it around as a reminder. And I did print out my personal info and emergency cards on a piece of scrapbook paper, cut it down, and then I laminated it on this matte laminator. Here is the other version of my personal info and emergency contacts. I laminated it on the regular glossy paper. So as you can see, here is the difference. I think the matte laminator looks so much better. It looks more luxe. I think it just looks higher quality in my opinion. So if you like to laminate things for your planner, I definitely recommend getting yourself some matte laminating sheets. So this is what the front pockets look like for me. It's not very fancy. It's pretty functional. And then here we have the front cover of my planner. If you look at my Starbucks planner video that I posted a couple of months ago, you'll see what this page originally looked like. And you'll notice that I added these floral stickers. These are from Happy Planner. They're botanical sticker set. And then I just have an Instax photo of me. I always like to put an Instax picture of me every year. And this one was back in July when my cousin got married. I have like 20 different selfies from that day. And then here is my personal info. I just have my name here and then my phone number and email as well in case somebody finds my planner without these. And just for fun, here is last year's Instax photo and then the year before that. And then here we have the personal info page that the planner comes in, but I didn't really like this page. It's that first page that sticks weirdly to the flyleaf. So I wasn't crazy about this and I decided to just start collaging over it. And as you can see, I've already started. So something I did last year is I would put in stickers and messages, postcards from Happy Mail that I received over the year. And I just stuck them into the front and back of my planner. So that's what I'm planning to do with this page over the year as I receive happy mail and messages and whatever else, they will all go on this page. So this is definitely not finished. This is just kind of the starter background of my collage. And I really like this sticker. 
And this sticker is from the Botanist Sticker Anthology book. I got this over the holidays and it's just so beautiful. It has so many floral stickers in all sorts of different colors. It also has some letterings and these frame stickers. So if you're into the vintage botanical aesthetic, I definitely recommend this book. I also have the Antiquarian Sticker Book. This is another one that's filled with just beautiful vintage style stickers. I got both of these for the holidays. And then some more sticker books that I love are the Happy Planner Journaling Doodles, the Botanical Set, and the Homebody Set. These two I used a lot last year and I still have plenty of stickers left so I'm going to keep using them for this year. And then I also have my Sticky Club sticker subscription, their Vintage Pack. And I've shown this sticker binder before on my channel, but look at her. She's getting really thick. I have to start a new sticker binder pretty soon because these rings are not going to fit anymore. So those are pretty much the main sticker packs that I'll be using this year. I will link all of the stickers that I show on this video below. And if I miss anything, feel free to let me know. All right, again, back to the planner. On the next page here is the 2021 planner illustration page and then the yearly overview i never use this page i considered putting down important dates on this one things like birthdays and anniversaries things like that but i honestly never look at this page so i don't know how much use i'll get out of it and then here is where my planner properly starts so again, if you looked at my first Starbucks planner video, you'll find that this is actually the December 2020 pages. And as I mentioned in that video, I like to contain one year into a single book. So I kept using my 2020 planner through December 2020. And I decided to cover up the December 2020 pages in this planner with some plain dotted paper and turn them into my own spreads. And that is my advice for you if you are starting a planner late or maybe you have a handful of pages that you don't care for. Don't be afraid to cover them up with blank paper and turn them into your own spreads. So here I have the index and I have started filling it out. I haven't completed it and I will show you why later on but here is what I've done. Again, I covered it up with these blank dotted pages and these are A5 binder inserts. Same thing that I did last year, I cut them down and pasted them into my planner. Here are more Botanist Anthology stickers. These stamps are from Michaels and then this washi tape is from Sterling Ink. And the next page is my key page. I love how this spread turned out. It's my favorite spread so far. I do use the bullet journal style of task management in my planner and here's the key that I use. It's not too different from the key that I used last year. Actually, it's exactly the same. And then on the next page, I have my 2021 in photos. I know that this year hasn't been very exciting as far as special events go, but I wanted to continue posting an Instax photo into my planner for this year because it's just a fun thing for me to do. And it does encourage me to appreciate the little things in life. So I'm going to continue doing that this year. And how I did it is, I took an Instax picture. This one's just a dud that I have from years ago. And I just used this to draw out these guides. By the way, I got this idea from Amanda Richley. I just love the idea of putting in a special photo every month. So I drew out the guides and then I wrote down the months assigned for every box. And then I went ahead and decorated them. So even though this page is technically empty, it still looks beautiful and it's going to become even more beautiful when I put in my own memories in it. So here is the first six months for my 2021 in photo spread, January to June. And then here is the next spread for July to December. And then I left out this column for my 2021 moments and it can just be either a caption for my photo or just one special thing that happened that month and it doesn't have to be anything super elaborate. It can be anything. It can be just a funny moment with my son or maybe my husband and I did something special. This isn't something that's meant to be ultra meaningful. It's just whatever made me happy that month. And then moving on, 
Here is my media log. I have a section for books, games, movies, and shows. Now, last year, I had individual pages for these four sections. And just to give you a peek of how that went last year, uh, it didn't go so well. I didn't read a lot of books, unfortunately. I didn't finish a single game. I did watch a few movies, and I watched a handful of shows. These were all mainly musicals from the Shows Must Go On YouTube channel. Otherwise, I didn't really do a lot of media consumption last year. Just I have a child, and my free time nowadays is dedicated to this channel, which I find a lot of fun, but it doesn't leave a lot of room for other things. Now back in 2019, I was able to fill up the media pages that I had because I didn't have a child at the time and I did write some mini reviews for the things that I was reading or playing or watching. Here are all the games I played. Ew, my handwriting. <laughs> I thought I was going to be able to fill up my 2020 planner in the same manner, but I didn't. I just wrote down the things that I consumed. I didn't even bother writing a mini review. I don't know why but I thought oh this time I'll just write down what I did and yeah so this year I decided to improve upon my system and just address the pain points that I had in my previous planner so now that I know that I don't have a lot of time for media consumption I've reduced the amount of space that my media log will have for this planner and then the next two spreads are blank because I didn't know what to put into these pages. I was thinking of doing a wish list on this page, but then these three pages I was totally blanking on. And I did receive some suggestions on Instagram. Like I could do a spending tracker or a year in pixels and what other. I know I got a handful of really helpful suggestions, but I'm struggling to commit. I don't know why. I just haven't decided on what to do with these pages just yet. But that's okay because it's still January. I have the entire year to figure it out. And even if I don't, I'll just do some memory keeping on these pages and it's not a big deal. And then here we have my 2021 goals. I do want to keep my goals personal just because I'm a little shy to share them. But you'll see here a big thing for me is to prioritize my mental health just because that was a struggle for me last year, especially around the holidays. And so this year I decided to do less and do fewer goals and trackers and routines. I think a huge pain point for me last year was I was just doing too much. I was trying to start up a channel. I was trying to grow my Instagram. At one point I tried building a blog and then I was thinking I will still have time to play games and do all this and blah, blah, blah. And I was just overwhelming myself. Maybe other people will be able to balance those, but for me, it was just too much. So for this year, I'm aiming to not put that kind of pressure on me and to just focus on things that really make me happy. So what makes me happy? It's spending time with my son, right? It's using YouTube as a creative outlet and not putting any external pressure on myself as far as view counts or subscriber counts or whatever and not setting reading goals and just enjoying the book and taking my time with it and not feeling bad about only reading three titles in a year. I greatly enjoyed the three books I read and I should consider that a success for me. So that is my main focus for 2021 is to do less things, but the things that I am doing, I want to put all of my effort and my energy into. And then here are my Q1 goals, just breaking down the 2021 goals that I have here into manageable chunks. All right, so now we move on to the January 2021 page. Here's the monthly spread, and as you can see, it's a month and two pages. A big advantage of the Starbucks planner for me is that the months are spread across two pages compared to the regular Moleskine planner. As you can see here, even in the pocket size, it keeps the month into one page, which doesn't give you a lot of space to write in. So that's one reason why I like the Starbucks planner versus the regular Moleskine planner. Another advantage to the Starbucks planner is it has blank pages at the end of the month, as opposed to the regular Moleskine planner again. So if you look at the end of the month for this one, here's the end of August, and then it jumps straight to September, and there are no blank pages in between. 
And then lastly, the Starbucks planner has a lot of blank pages in the back. Compared to the regular moleskin, you only get a couple. Yep, that's it. So functionally, I find the Starbucks planner to be a lot more useful. I don't know why the moleskin planner doesn't implement these features. I hope that in the future, they will start improving on their page setup here. But for now, I'll keep ordering Starbucks planners for my main planner. All right, so I keep going off topic. <laughs> Back to the flip through. Here is the week 53 spread. 2021 started on a Friday, which means that these days were from 2020. And since I have those logged onto my 2020 planner, I found these days to be irrelevant to me. So I decided to just collage over them. So I just pasted in this scrapbook paper and then I stickered over this side. And one thing that I was hoping to do this year is to push back my memory keeping to once a month rather than once a week, at least until current events are over. Because since we are staying at home all the time, there isn't a lot of exciting things to log. That said, memory keeping last year did encourage me again to look for the magic in the little things, you know, like the funny things that my son did. Last year, I did memory keeping every week and while that was fun, I found myself repeating the same type of memory keeping into my baby journal because most of my spreads last year was about my babies. So I thought that was too repetitive. I wanted to streamline my system this year and not do things twice so much. So that's why I decided to do memory keeping only once a month in my main planner for now. Just do monthly highlights and be more committed to using my baby journal for all of my son's memories. So that's one of the big changes that I wanted to do for this planner. So I'm not completely done with this spread just yet. I will probably add more things to this later on. And then here we go at the current week. I haven't decorated this yet because the week's still ongoing. So I'm going to be filling these with tasks and then notes here on the side if I need it. And then I will decorate it after the fact. That's something that I always do so that I can maintain the functionality of my planner while still being able to enjoy decorating as I please. And that is what I have so far for this weekly spread. It's very bare bones compared to how I used to do my weekly spread. And that's because I decided to consolidate my tracking and move them all to this page and just have my tracker into one place. Last year, something I also did was put in a weekly tracker and I found it to be very helpful. But, but again, this year I'm trying to streamline my process and do less things with my planner. So I decided to consolidate my tracker into just a monthly spread on this single page so that I don't have to keep doing it every week. Not that it was bothersome, but the less time I spend setting up my planner, I feel like the happier I will be. So here is what my monthly tracker looks for now. This is a printable from Simple and Trendy Co. This is the monthly tracker in the B6 size and I just cut it down just so, so that it would fit my moleskin planner. Here are the things that I'm tracking so far. I did cover up my mood tracker just to keep things private and I will get to that in more detail when my wellness planner arrives. But basically tracking my mood does give me insight as to why I wasn't so productive that day. So for example, maybe I didn't check off as much things on my tracker as I usually do. I might wonder, oh, well, what happened? I can just look at my mood and see that, oh, okay, well, I wasn't feeling that great that day. Just things like that. And then I just keep this page flag here so that when I have my planner closed or I can just flick this page flag and I can get on my tracker. And then the same thing for the monthly page. I can just flick to this page flag here and there you go. So I'll be moving these page flags to the current month and the current tracker. And then doing a quick flip of my planner, you'll see that I have some holiday stickers here and there. I'm horrible at keeping track of US holidays. So these holiday stickers are really helpful to have. These are from Fern Creek stickers on Etsy and I will link her shop below. I really love her style. And then in the back for my blank pages, I've started my washi wall spread here. If you'll notice, these are bits of washi tape that I used here in my beginning spreads. Yep. 
rather than tossing them out, I like to just stick them in the back of my planner and then by the end of the year, I'll have a really pretty spread. And then moving on to the back, I am keeping some paperwork here in the back. I just like to tuck it into the secretarial pocket here and I don't mind this overhang up top. I find that if I have a secretarial pocket to stash documents in, I don't really need a back pocket. And then closing up my Chic Sparrow, this is how my planner looks. It's very slim and compact compared to the Moterm cover or the Julia Apunto Van der Speck Codex because you don't have a lot of extra frills on this cover, but I still do love this cover. It's so lightweight, but it can still hold everything that I need for planning. And that is my 2021 initial planner setup. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some ideas. Thank you so much for watching. This is Baba Notes and I will see you next time. Bye!